Rockford, Illinois native and Guilford grad and Chicago Tribune reporter, Kristen McQuarrie's on the line. She's got time for us this morning. Kristen, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? I'm excellent. How are you? You know, people are still buzzing over your fight song. I'm sure. Yep. yep. Yeah. yeah I'm that's sure one of those, you know, breaking news all day long. That's one of those things people said to themselves, you know, I'm glad I got up that morning. Right. <laughs> and we did have like quite, a, quite a few clicks on the old YouTube video, too. So Absolutely. People are listening. She does more than sing beautifully, though. She covers a lot of interesting things, too. And an editorial board member out of the Tribune, too. Uh, Kristen, let's start with what we do know for sure, and that's the term limit fight. And the term limit ballot proposal, the ballot question, will not be on the ballot in November. Supreme Court Friday said no, didn't even listen to arguments on the case, so... Uh, Bruce Rutter was in okay shape either way, because he either says, come out and vote for it and vote for me, or they're trying to take your voice away, and I guess that's the path he takes at this point. Yeah, um, I mean, it's just, it's very perplexing that the court wouldn't even take up the case. Um, they ruled on this in 1994 and said that term limits is an issue that is too narrow for the Constitution um, for voters to vote on it. So Rauner tried to add different language to make it more constitutionally friendly, and the court still just wouldn't, wouldn't even take up the case. Um, it's very, very frustrating. The thing to remember is that the lawmakers can do this themselves. It requires a three-fifths vote in both chambers. They can vote to get it on the ballot, not obviously this time around, but it's something voters should be asking their candidates when they come and knock on your door. Not do you support it, but will you file a bill, sponsor it, and work it really hard to get it out of the legislature. That should make for some interesting reactions, depending on who it is you talk to. It, it does. Um, there are a number of really sensible constitutional amendment questions that, of course, get bottled up in committee. Um, one that comes to mind for years, we've been talking about the need to combine the treasurer and comptroller's offices to save money. We don't need two financial, you know, statewide offices. Mm -hmm. That bill has more than 80 sponsors in the House, Republicans, Democrats. It is locked up in the Rules Committee, and only Mike Madigan can release it. So it just sits there. And that's similar to other term limit bills that have moved through the General Assembly. So we need an uprising. We need people to, you know, absolutely make this uh, a number one issue if they are elected in November, that they are going to fight to get this, you know, before the people. It's funny. We had uh, uh, a local uh, Democrat who was running for, for office, and one of his... Uh, uh, I want to say big planks, but he talked a lot about, hey, we got to combine the comptroller and treasurer's office to save some money. we got to do that, move forward, and, you know, our reaction was, all right, go talk to Mike Madigan. Yeah. I mean, he's the guy standing in the way. It, that's exactly right. He's been sitting on that bill for about two and a half years now, and he's the only one who can release it. And, you know, if, you're, if we're going to keep electing Democrats in the state who keep choosing Mike Madigan as speaker, this is what's going to happen. I mean, these the... the Term limits amendment and the redistricting amendment were both citizen initiatives. I mean, my doctor had petitions in her office. This was a grassroots effort on both of these issues, and it's just very heartbreaking that these citizen initiatives just get, you know, they get slammed down. And in both cases, it was Madigan's top attorney who fought them, and with redistricting, got it kicked off based, or actually they gave up. Um, the, ter the redistricting group ended up giving up and with term limits took it to court, all, all orchestrated by Madigan. You know, we've gone back and forth on this show on term limits over and over again. You know, uh, is the ballot box the term limit we ought to be looking for? Should real term limits be, be introduced? And we've kind of uh, ma made a bit of a revolution on it in, in, in our way of thinking. I haven't looked at any polling overall. What, what, what was the state's reaction overall if there was a, a poll floated on the idea of term limits? It's overwhelmingly popular. I believe in the last um, Tribune poll that we that came out just a couple weeks ago, it's it's eighty percent. Um, and the issue is just getting it on the ballot. You know, mm -hmm. should even if you disagree with term limits, go to the ballot box then and and vote no. But they're not even giving us a chance to vote on it. Kristen McCreary with us, Concord Tribune editorial board member. It's Riley and Scott here on WROK. Uh, let's move toward what um, wasn't a great weekend for Governor Quinn or his campaign. 
less than three months away, and both big scandals with new revelations. Start with IDOT, and that kind of spiral, not spiral, but certainly built up toward the tail end of last week. We had the staff assistants being fired, the report from the executive inspector general, but then midday on Friday, you've got the ex-IDOT boss, Ann Schneider, stepping forward after the executive uh, inspector general report said, we don't see Pat Quinn having a hand in these hires, and Schneider turns around and says, no, no. All of these came from Governor Quinn and his office. They're the ones that gave me the names, and I felt totally uncomfortable saying no to any of these. This is a big story. This one could last for a while. It could. Um, throughout state government, but particularly in IDOT, there are supposed to be very strict rules. When you fill positions, you have to post it. You have to collect resumes. It has to be available to the average Joe. And there are all kinds of different ways that people try to sneak in um, friends of friends, and staff assistant was one of the positions where they were sliding in. There were up, up to 200 of these um, kind of clouded positions at one point under Bogoyevich and then Quinn. So, right, the fact that the IDOT secretary, Ann Schneider, she resigned last year, I mean, Quinn was her boss, and mm -hmm. so she is saying, I was getting orders from his office for these particular people. So it. It's, it's troublesome for him. Now, there's not an investigation yet in that case, a criminal investigation. There's just this report. But I wouldn't be surprised if some law enforcement agency wants to sniff around a little bit. You know, we made this point earlier in the morning, too. You're, you're taking over for Rod Blagojevich, who ostensibly found himself sitting, uh, you know, in the Gray Bar Hotel over patronage hirings, amongst other things. Boy, that would be the one thing I think if I were taking over watch that I would make sure that we did absolutely right. I know. It's, it's <laughs> mind-boggling. And, and believe me, IDOT is not the only agency. I'm sure there are a lot of agency heads right now um, a little concerned about whatever the title is. For A lot of them have deputy secretary or whatever their, their you know, classification is for these jobs. But, right, I mean, this is what got Blagojevich in trouble. So you would think Quinn would be squeaky clean, and it just doesn't appear so. And even if he tries to pass the buck, which he has, and said, you know, he wasn't aware that this was going on, he's going after Rauner in the campaign for not knowing things that were going on in Rauner's company. Well, where does the buck stop, stop with Governor Quinn? I mean, why didn't he know that these um, illegal hires were, were happening? Christy McCurry with us from the Chicago Tribune editorial boards. Riley and Scott on WYOK. He also says he had no idea those neighborhood recovery initiative funds were being doled out the way they were. He designed the program. He set it up. It was a huge anti-violence push as he went for re-election. But after it was set up, he doesn't know what happened. It's all a part of the Illinois Violence Prevention Authority. They're the ones that handed out that cash. That's right. That Again, he's... he's he... Is, I don't know whether that, that is under federal criminal investigation by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Central Illinois. And the latest news there is that the feds have subpoenaed emails of Governor Quinn's former chief of staff, Jeff, Jack Lavin. Mm -hmm. And Jack Lavin's been around state government a very long time, um, city government too. And uh, there was some talk during those committee legislative hearings a few months back that some emails relating to this NRI program, this grant money that was misspent, that went to Jack Lavin, he forwarded them to his personal address, his mm -hmm. personal email. So I think they're going to look and see now whether or not there is a direct link between the campaign and where that money went, the campaign of 2010. Chris, and every time uh, something new breaks with the Neighborhood Recovery Initiative, uh, Quinn spokesman basically says, hey, um, as soon as he found out about this, he took action to shut it down. And uh, that just doesn't seem to be true. You know, we, we talked with uh, State Senator Dave Severson and Tim Bivens and Matt Murphy, and those guys were warning 12, 18 months previous to Quinn action that there were big problems with the uh, Neighborhood Recovery Initiative. Over the weekend, I found... Uh, print stories from the Chicago Public Radio Station and, and one of the neighborhood newspapers in Chicago and Austin uh, from February of 2011, talking about how people were upset about how the money was being doled out. It was all going to friends of this uh, of the current older woman. Uh, they, they called Pat Quinn's office looking for an explanation, didn't get a return call before the story went to print. So there were a lot of warnings before the governor took action on, uh, on NRI. How long does he get away with just saying, I didn't know about it? Right. Um, I'm not sure. We'll see how much voters uh, believe that. But you're absolutely right. I mean, this all happened in the fall of 2010. And by the spring of 2011, Republicans in the House were screaming for an audit of this program. And it, that audit that was then released two years later, which was um, 2013, 
last year. That is what, or I'm sorry, it was released this year. Mm-hmm. That is what um, it is causing all the firestorms. So Quinn didn't call for an audit of the program. Republicans in the House did. And, that, and then we learned where all this money was misspent. All right, Kristen, so you're, uh, you're running for re-election as governor. Is this a sort of deluge of uh, stories you'd like to become pouring down the pike right as we get within, oh, 60 days or so of an election cycle? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> um, I think Bruce Rauner's going to have uh, some real, he can put some meat on the bones now in terms of his political advertising. I'm sure you'll start seeing it, and some of it is already out there, with headlines that, you know, I mean, this was Quinn's bread and butter, is that he was a reformer, and you can trust him. And now these stories are kind of chipping away at that. Kristen, we talked with uh, Friday from a reporter at a roll call in, in D.C. who uh, wrote a piece. She was at the State Fair in Springfield and talking about some real deep concerns in D.C. that uh, Governor Quinn, if things don't, don't turn around pretty quickly, might not just lose but drag down the rest of the ticket, cost some congressional seats in Washington. Are you hearing those whispers, too? I mean, Brad Schneider in 10, uh, facing a stiff challenge from Bob Dole. Our, our, our direction, we have Bobby Schilling and Sherry Bustos. Uh, Schilling looking to, uh, in, in the rematch to defeat Sherry Bustos. Are you hearing some whispers, too, the Democrats are, are, are getting c- quite concerned about how down-ballot races might turn out, too? Yeah, they, I'm hearing a lot about that, and, and you'll notice you don't see Quinn. No one's really using him at their events. They're not... There's not a lot to brag about in terms of the state finances and where we're headed. And so you don't see Schneider and some of these freshman congressmen bringing Quinn to their events to help raise money. And there is, because of, I think, the term limits issue, Mike Madigan, Quinn, you throw all of that together, and there is very much a, you know, throw out the incumbents and anti-democratic tone right now that I think a lot of those members of Congress are worried about. Kristen McQuarrie with us here from the Chicago Tribune on their editorial board. It's Rodney and Scott here on WYOK. Um, the, the race itself, Bruce Rodner and Pat Quinn, the gubernatorial race. We've seen some polls with Bruce Rodner up 13, 14 points. Some internal Quinn polls have him down two, four, five points or so. What's your best guess on the state of the race right now? So I, I, I have a lot of questions about some of these polls. I think the poll that is... Well, I'll go with our Tribune poll because we actually call people on the telephone and talk to them. They're not those necessarily automated polls. Mm-hmm. And those are showing, if you factor in the margin of error of the poll, it's really close. I mean, Rauner's only up by a couple of points. So I think it's a reflection of people being concerned about these offshore accounts. I think Quinn is getting some mileage on this issue that Rauner hid money in the Cayman Islands and, and his wealth. Um, and I think it's also, I think Rauner... This is his election to lose. I mean, if he loses, he has no one to blame but himself because the table is set for him and reform and Republicans. But I do think Quinn is getting some, some leverage on that issue. And uh, rauner has got to, he's got to keep batting that down and convince people that, you know, he's, he's not this careless, uh, wealthy businessman who's going to come in and destroy the state and take unions apart and people are really worried about collective bargaining this is a really heavily unionized state and so it's really close i mean no 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 i wouldn't i wouldn't pick a winner right now <laughs> uh, quickly Kristen, bruce router has been um a little i don't want to say under the radar but uh, he, he's not put himself in situations where he could make a gaffe uh, he's tried to stay a little, little arm's length from the media through this race there's what, t- less than three months ago, two and a half months ago, Pat Quinn's trying to make him into some sort of Romney-esque, big business, vulture, capitalist kind of guy. Would you, would you continue the strategy that Bruce Rauner has been going on, or would you make him a little more accessible both to the public and to the media to, to show perhaps he's not this, this Frankenstein guy the governor wants to make him out to be? I would probably stick with his strategy because uh, of not really putting him out front as often as maybe we would like. Uh, certainly, I've had, I've had trouble as a writer trying to get him on the phone, trying to get his campaign people to answer basic questions about policy. It's, it is frustrating. But he has a couple gaffes. He changed his story on minimum wage mm-hmm. two or three times. He changed his story on whether or not he clouded his daughter into a very prestigious high school here. He changed his story on that a couple of times. So I think they are trying to you know, keep him very controlled. They do have a series of debates coming up, and those will be very telling because those, a lot of them are open-ended. He's coming to the Tribune. Both of them are coming to the Tribune editorial board on September 9th. It's one of the first times we're going to live stream it, and you'll get to see them. You know, We'll really ask a lot of these 
pointed questions, and then maybe you'll get to know Bruce Rauner a little more. Kristen McQuarrie, Chicago Tribune. Thanks, as always, for taking time out of your day for us, and hopefully you'll uh, find some more time as we get ever closer to Election Day. Anytime. My pleasure. Thanks. Have a Thanks. great one.